And I'm back to another album review. Today's review is on Three Chairs of Sweet Revenge by My Chemical Romance. This is the second studio album by MCR, their first album released on Reprise Records, and their first album with Frank Yarrow as an official member of the band. It was also their last album with Matt Pellissier on drums before he was replaced by Bob Breyer. This album was recorded by uh, Mike Plotnikoff at, uh, at Bay 7 Studios, Villa, uh, Valley Village, and Sparky Dark Studio in Calabasas, California. The album was produced by Howard Benson, and he helped Rich Costi with the mixing. On a side note, uh, Howard has previously worked with Motorhead as a producer, and Gerard Way is a Motorhead fan, so there is some connection right there. Additional engineering was provided by Eric Miller. Editing and programming were done by Paul De uh, DeCarly. The drum technician was uh, John Nicholson. The guitar technician was Keith Nelson. The album was mastered by Tom Baker at Precision Mastering. It was released on uh, June 8th, 2004 on Reprise Records. Meaning that the 20th anniversary is this year as of the making of this video. This album also marked a turning point of when the band took a, a turn towards pop punk, which is what they would do going forward. Now let's talk about the songs. The beginning of this album is Helena, which was released as a single on uh, March, yeah, March 8th, 2005. The song does have some elements of gothic rock, and it was inspired by the Misfits song of the same name. So it was also written as a tribute to uh, Gerard and Mikey Way's grandmother, Elena Lee Rush. I remember this artist on Twitter who calls himself Desperado Dave once uploaded a video where he was creating a piece of fan art of Luna from Hell of a Boss. And the video was set to this song. The music video was made and there's a link in the description. After that is Give Him Hell Kid. The song is mostly in the realm of punk rock. And I said before that I consider MCR as uh, more of a punk band rather than emo. The next track is To The End. Now, the lyrics mention drinking cyanide. And I don't need to explain why people do that. Next up is You Know What They Do To Guys Like Us In Prison. A gunfight is mentioned in the lyrics. The song even features uh, Burt McCracken providing additional vocals. Up next is I'm Not Okay, I Promise, which was released as a single on September 13th, 2004. This was actually the very first single from this album, and it was even featured in the game Burnout 3, Takedown. Perhaps the worst thing about the song is that 21 Pilots butchered it with a really shitty cover. There is a music video that was made, and I'm including a link in the description. On a side note, my dad sometimes plays this song on his radio show. We, fo uh, we followed it up with The Ghost of You, which was released as a single on April 29th, uh, 2005. The song received a music video, and there's a link in the description. Yeah, the video has references to the famous D-Day scene from the film Saving Private Ryan. That's followed up by Jet Set, uh, The Jet Set Life is kill, uh, Gonna Kill You. And I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be a love song based on the lyrics. What comes after that is Interlude. The title, oh, the title is uh, self-explanatory because it leads into the next song. What comes after that is Thank You for the Venom which was released as a single on uh, December 13th, 2004. The beginning of the song references the song Sister, I'm a Poet by Morrissey. And what's after that is Hang Em High. What's really awesome is that the song features additional vocals from Keith Morris of Black Flag and Circle Jerks fame. He's also the frontman for the punk supergroup called Off. The track after that is, it's not a fashion statement, it's a fucking death wish. The lyrics mention killing enemies and inflicting damage. The second to last track is Cemetery Drive. I would say that this is tied with Helena as my favorite song from this album. 
The ending of this album is, I never told you what I do for a living. Or else I think this song ends the album perfectly. One thing I should mention is that the Japanese version has a bonus track called Bury Me in Black, Demo. This is a song that was demo but never finalized. As you can see, my copy does not have that bonus track. I'll talk more about the song in the next review. When researching this album, I read that it was certified three times platinum in the US. It was also certified platinum in Canada and the UK, as well as gold in Australia, Chile, Ireland, Mexico, and New Zealand. The critics really liked this album. Even Pitchfork, the music publication I hate the most, had the decency to give this album a positive review. In fact, they gave it an 8.2 out of 10, and it's one of those rare times where Pitchfork got it right. It's kind of ironic that they like this album better than Rolling Stone did. Now for my thoughts. I think this album is a major improvement over its predecessor. And I think making the transition to pop punk was the right decision for the band. To say this album uh, catapulted the band to the mainstream would be an understatement. I stated earlier that this album's 20th anniversary is going to be later this year. I don't know what MCR will do to commemorate it, but we'll have to wait and see. Overall, I highly recommend this album. Now as part of my question you, have you listened to Three Cheers of Sweet Revenge? If so, what do you think about it? What's your favorite song from it? Do you think MCR will do anything to celebrate this album's 20th anniversary? Then let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Be sure to press the notification bell to notify of future videos. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with another review.